Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video from Nathana Studios. And today, it is another Q&A session for Grand Theft Auto Darklight. There's been many questions sent in over Freedom, Twitter, and Xbox Live, actually. And today, we're going to answer all of them. Well, we're going to try and answer them in the best way we possibly can, because, of course, we don't want to give away spoilers for the movie. So let's get right into today's Q&A session. The first question is, what can you tell us about the characters Elizabeth Salvagia and Mr. Drax? Well, we'll go through Elizabeth's backstory first. Well, of, for what I can tell you, Elizabeth Salvagia is the widow of a of a, a member of Honor, the secret organization in Grand Theft Auto Darklight. Uh, she's a very sophisticated character. Uh, she doesn't let herself um, express. She doesn't express her inner emotions and feelings to people. She's a very closed person, um, and she's very insecure at the moment, and especially in the movie. Um, we see her at a very difficult time in her life. Uh, you'll definitely see that on screen. And Jessica Cooper, who voiced Elizabeth Salvagia, uh, she did a fantastic job. Um, she did a very, very good performance, and you'll be able to see that in the movie. Uh, Mr. Drax, there's nothing really I can give you about Mr. Drax without giving anything away. All I can say is Mr. Drax is a character who is always focused, and he's always on the job. And you'll be able to see uh, Kane Hart's performance of Mr. Drax in the movie. And trust me, there are some awesome sequences with Mr. Drax. I think you're going to love it. The second question is, Honor is a secret organization, but what do their operations consist of? Is it to do something with global terrorization? Well, Honor in itself is a business company, in a way. Um, it likes to handle logistics and figures and it it likes to twist things around a lot and Honor likes to experiment on many different things to do with society and it, it likes to have a sense of control on the world. Um, all I can say is that the people who run it, the board members, the executive members, all I can say is that they are businessmen and that they care a lot about their company and they care about the future of the planet definitely and they want to control as much as they can. That's sort of all I can say about Honor in itself. It's not, there's obviously a lot more to be able to find out in the movie. The third question is, appearance wise, will Nico ever have a shaven or bald face? Now this is a very interesting question and actually it's quite a good one. Um, there have been scenes in the past where Nico has gone bald um, and I think there was a movie where Nico did have no beard at all. Um, there's, there's not, there's not going to be a permanent change, I think. Nico will always have the set of hair and he'll always have the beard he has because that's just what Nico looks like. Maybe in the future we'll write in a scene where he has to go bald or you know something like that. I don't know, but so far there are no plans for it. The next question is, what do you think of Rockstar Games adding the Aston Martin DB10 as a DLC vehicle for a future update? Well, we'd love it. I mean, who wouldn't want the Aston Martin DB10? For those who don't know, the Aston Martin DB10 is the upcoming vehicle in the new James Bond film Spectre. Um, it's a beautiful car. Uh, we can't wait to see the movie. Um, so, yeah, I think we'd love it. And I think even if it was in GTA 5, I think we would use it, actually. I think it would be a very big contender for a, uh, a car. Um, you know, Nico's choice of car in, in an upcoming movie. You know, why not? It's, it's a beautiful car, but yeah, we'd love to have it in GTA 5. It's just a question of, will Rockstar listen to us? The next question is, as the stories of the movies progress into something even bigger, will Nico be depicted as a force of nature, somewhat in the, in the way of John Wick? This is a very good question and I like it. Um, it all depends on how the script goes and what we think of it. It all depends on the plot of the movie and it all depends on the characters, the setting. It also depends on the situation that he's in. Um, I like to think that Nico is a force of nature already, especially in Grand Theft Auto Darklight. He seems like, he seems, he seems as if he's the one in control a lot of the time. Um, in the future, there, I think there will be scripts where Nico is, you know, can be seen as a force of nature. I think you will see that. Um, it's just a matter of time, really. But yeah, in the future, I can probably see Nico being, you know, shown as somebody who is, you know, all powerful, all wise. You know, he is the guy to go to. And to be fair, at the minute, he's not doing too bad considering he's been, you know, he's been called the FIB's best agent. So, you know, we think that yeah, he probably is and already is. And the final question is. What inspires the team to continue making these feature-length films, and what makes Darklight different from the previous bunch? What inspires us? Um, all to do with public support, really. 
or you guys um, are a very big motivation for us. We will not do another film if everybody hates it. it as I've been saying before, Bloodgrave was an experiment, and so theoretically so was the second wave. After Bloodgrave did so badly, I said, I, I want to do a second one, but if it doesn't go well, we will stop. The second one did really well, you guys loved it, so we did another one. And it's grown into this franchise, this, you know, going to be seven movies now. Um, it's going to be, you know, it, it's going to be into something bigger. It will definitely be. But another thing that motivates us, really, is how society grows and, you know, the things that are coming, to, not just to society, but to the games in general, how, how games are developing. New features get added to games and, you know, problems arise in society and we can combine the two to create a movie. And that's what some of our movies are based on. Um, so, you know, it's, it, the world we live in and you guys help motivate us. And what makes Dark Light different from the other bunch? I think the script, mostly. I think the script is a lot better, I think. I also believe that the cast is far, far better. Um, than insurgencies. I think everyone who is returning did an even better job, and I think the people who are now on the project um, did a fantastic job. You know, I think that the cast is awesome. Um, I think everyone did a brilliant performance. Not, there's not one person I had to say, "Can you go back and redo this?" I mean, yeah, we had to go and do rewrites of things, but that wasn't, you know, that that wasn't their fault. And you know, technical issues arise sometimes, but that's about it. You know, everybody else's performance was brilliant. I also think the storyline, it's very, um, I'll say it's very dark and quite sinister in parts. And I like that in movies, I like that. It gives a sense of mystery, and especially to something of this scale and, you know, with this plot. It's very good to have it in this type of movie. Um, it's very reminiscent to Spectre, actually, in terms of the trailer and how that, you know, how that's working. Obviously, we haven't seen the film yet, but, um, you yeah, know, it's quite similar to that. You'll see. I think you'll we'll definitely see similarities between the two. Um, you know, which we'll have to wait to, until that comes out. But yes, guys, that is it for today's Q and A session. Thank you very much for sending in your questions. If you have any more, please send them in the comment section, Twitter, um, all the other uh, forms of social networking like Freedom and Xbox. Please uh, get in contact with us. We'll try and answer your questions as best as we can. Um, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.